and NASA's big universe-changing revelation. Microbes from a California lake can survive even when the phosphorus in their system is swapped out for arsenic. What if life exists based on another element? But what if life exists based on another element? Derek Pitts on why chances of life in space just increased because of the story of arsenic and Old Lake. All the news and commentary now on Countdown. Are you certain? Positive. Now it's been about life in outer space. Well, when they say life, they mean microbes. And when they say outer space, they mean South Tufa, California. Derek Pitts explains. Quoting from the news release issued earlier in the week, NASA will hold a news conference at 2 p.m. Thursday, December 2nd, to discuss an astrobiology finding that will impact the search for evidence of extraterrestrial life. Jim, to many fanciful thinkers on the interwebs and elsewhere, that statement was reduced to NASA finding extraterrestrial life. Holy crap! In other words, today would be the day NASA revealed its secret captive alien space creature, Donald Trump's hair. Except in our number one story, today we didn't get anything like this. We have come to visit you in peace. <laughs> Instead, we got this. I'd like to introduce to you today the bacterium GFAJ-1. These are not little potatoes. No aliens, just alien-like potato-looking bacteria. Derek Pitts will explain why this is still a huge deal. NASA, NASA astrobiologist Felisa Wolf Simon today revealing that the results of her team's study on bacteria from Mono Lake in California, till today it was thought that the element phosphorus was the essential building block, or at least one of them, of all life. Wolf Simon claims her team was able to extract the phosphorus out of the bacterium, GFAG, uh, potato bacterium, and replace it with the poison in, arson, uh, the poison in arsenic while keeping the bacteria alive, hence life as we don't know it. The extrapolation by Wolf Simon is that they can engineer life without phosphorus in a lab, and it's certainly possible outside the lab and thus outside the planet. Strain GFAJ1, the bacterium, is a different way to do business. It has solved the challenge of being alive in a very different way than, than we knew of. What other questions can we ask? This will inform us about life on our own planet, and it will help inform us of life. We will find it one day elsewhere in the universe. So what will that poisony arsenic life on other planets look like? The answer, according to NASA, might just be found in season one, episode 25 of the original Star Trek. If you remember, uh, is it Dark Evil and the Horta? So this is, in our mind, the equivalent of finding that Horta, which is a silicon-based life, substituting carbon, which is what we think all life forms are made of, with silica. Now, I hate to correct NASA, but in the episode, it's called the, e the Devil in the Dark. And I have to warn you, scientists, the silicon-based Horta is phaser-resistant. I'm quite at a loss. was nay so much a man as a blabonge. Joining me now as promised, Derek Pitts, the chief astronomer at the Franklin Institute, Philadelphia, because, damn it, Jim, I'm not a scientist. Uh, good evening to you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Keith. How are you? Uh, well, I, I, I'm trying to get this straight. There's a phaser-resistant horta made out of arsenic in Mono Lake in California. Do I have this right? Uh, yes, so far. Okay. What, what actually is this? Tell me why I should not be underwhelmed. Well, first of all, we have to invent the phase shifting phaser so that we can make uh, it possible to shoot the right creatures with these. Got it. But in any case, the story here, Keith, is that we've been able to determine that these six basic building blocks for life are not actually cast in stone. So the model that we set up for ourselves to look for life in other environments, say at other planets and other things like that, really now can expand itself, and that in turn expands the possibilities for finding different kinds of life in different environments. So we've upped our chances of being able to mm -hmm. discover life. 
Obviously, uh, not all the time, but frequently, science takes cues, or at least Im the imagination takes cues from science fiction. But if mm -hmm. Gene Roddenberry was writing about this idea in 1966 or 67, why are we just getting around to proving it can happen in 2010? Well, the thing is that we haven't been able to find anything like this anywhere. The assumption has always been that we need these six basic building blocks. And every form of life we've looked at on this planet so far has shown us that these are the six basic building blocks. What I really like about what this particular scientist did was she started out with an assumption that perhaps it would, could be possible to change out one of these building blocks and see what might happen. She chose the right one, the phosphorus in this case, that really looks very much like arsenic when you analyze what the, what the atom is like itself. They're sort of interchangeable in a sense. And so by doing this, she determined that, hey, wait a minute, it is possible that we can change building blocks and still have metabolic processes go on as we know them. So that's the really big step forward here. Is there any indication that this is the only one of the building blocks that might be swapped out, or could we find out some day that you could also replace one of them with, you know, Royal Crown Cola. <laughs> it could be possible that we could find out that one of the other building blocks could be different, or that in a, diff in a different environment, different building blocks could be used. And you know, we've always had this idea, Keith, mm -hmm. you're right, if you look at science fiction, this has been around for decades, of course, but when we actually look at hard science, we need real solid facts to say that this is the case and then be able to jump off from there and do the proper kinds of uh, exploration and data collecting from here to determine that this is indeed the case and maybe we find more examples here on this planet, but it prepares us now to go out into the solar system and the rest of the galaxy and maybe find others. Any place we should be looking for the arsenic monsters or the, uh, as they're also known, the Arsenio people? <laughs> I'd say something about government at this point, but I think I'll let that go by. Okay. Uh, I think the thing for a scientist to do now is to try to determine where else on Earth we might be able to find these different kinds of, uh, these, these microorganisms that might be able to interchange various b uh, basic building blocks and see what other sort of uh, changes to that basic uh, formula for life we might be able to uh, suggest and see what happens. Derek Pitts, the chief astronomer at the Franklin Institute, and, and due to the lack of time, I can't ask you about unicorns, so you're lucky. As always, great <laughs> Thank thanks, you. Derek. Thank you. Thanks, much. Keith.